How's it going guys, XHD here, bringing you my review of the new NHL 17 ESHL classes. First things first guys, I'm actually now home from Europe, so should be more videos uploaded as well. Second thing, if you can kind of tell my voice, I've been sick the last few days, so sorry about that, you guys are going to have to put up with it. But if you guys didn't know, there's actually four new classes for ESHL in NHL 17. The first is the Hitting Sniper, it's kind of modeled after Ovechkin. Um, obviously it's a bigger version of the already existing Sniper. He has higher hitting power, but his sniper accuracy is uh, dropped. So he's basically like better at hitting, and he's a bigger player using, and he's also a bit slower, and he's not as good as shots. So personally, um, I wasn't a huge fan of him. Um, for all of these builds, guys, obviously I'm a game changer. I've played with all of them for hours, and I, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. But like I was saying, I wasn't a big fan of him. Um, I feel like the regular sniper is better as it does more on the wing. It's faster, has a better shot. And hitting really isn't that big of a deal, especially if you're a winger. Like, I wouldn't play this player at sniper, or at center, sorry. i definitely use him on the wing. And on the wing, I feel like the regular sniper is a, is a better version. The extra hitting, like in ESHL, you're just going to get yourself out of position. Like, you'd rather just have better defensive stats than hitting stats. So, personally, I'm not a huge fan of them. Obviously, it's fun to use different builds in that, but I didn't find it to be the best build at all. Moving on now, guys, the second new build is the large playmaker. This one's modeled after Joe Thornton, so... This is another bigger version of an already existing build that is the Playmaker. So this build obviously has like a bigger frame instead of the Playmaker that's like 5'11 or whatever. Uh, the, the large Playmaker is like 6'3, weighs more, bit slower, um, has really good passing. You know, obviously like the Playmaker, better hitter, um, you know, just kind of does all those things. Personally, I actually kind of like this build. Um, it was a bit different than the Playmaker, but I felt it really worked well at center. Wasn't a fan of him on the wing. I felt he was too slow at center. Uh, I seem to do the right things. Like I said, really good passing. The actual hitting in the center is kind of good if you're going to the front of the net. And I really liked him at center. Didn't really like him at the wing. So like I said, kind of recap here. The hitting sniper is decent on the wing, but I feel like the regular sniper is better. Large playmaker I actually really liked at center. But if you're going to use a wing, I'd probably just stick with the regular playmaker. Moving on now, guys, to the two-way dangler. This one is modeled after Datsuk. Um, so obviously it's a dangler with a lot better defensive skills. Um, the dangler is a new build they added this year, and this two-way dangler is just a dangler with a higher defensive rating and a slightly lower, um, basically like deking rating. No word of a lie, the two-way dangler, as at least from my experience playing the game about a month ago, so in like May I think I was there, or I, I forget when I was there, but whenever I was there last, um, the two-way dangler was hands down the best build. It was so good. You can use him at center. You can use him at wing. It doesn't matter. Um, just the fact that he has the really good deking and basically basically puck control passing things like that with the high defensive stats. Like you use him at center, very good in terms of like uh, helping them win the face-offs, good poke checks, good stick checks. Even on the wing, like you know, like extra defensive stats really help out, especially when you're playing a team game. We were always playing like fives or sixes, so obviously defensive stats. You really want to get those interceptions. Two-way angler just hands down the best build I used uh, for forward. And finally, guys, the fourth build is the new defensive build. That is the puck-moving defenseman. Uh, this one, like the two-way dangler, was, in my opinion, the new best build for a defenseman. Um, the offensive defenseman has been kind of tuned now. It's more about, like, a really good shot. The defensive defenseman has been more tuned now. He's more about hitting and stuff. Obviously not, like, an enforcer defenseman. He's also, got, like, better defensive stats, more mobile. But the puck-moving defenseman has the best passing of all the defensemen. As well, he felt faster than all the other defensemen. I'm pretty sure they all have the same speed, but for whatever reason, maybe it was his size, I don't know. He felt faster than every other defenseman, which is obviously huge for chasing down players on breakaways. And then his passing, in my opinion, passing is probably the most important thing for a defenseman in ESHL. Passing the puck up to your forwards, you know, moving the play, rushing on offense. The puck moving defenseman, hands down, the new best uh, defensive player build. So anyway guys, that's just a quick recap of the four new builds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave that thumbs up. Again, sorry about my voice. I'm sure it's tough to listen to. Hopefully it gets better in the next couple days. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.